There was an unfortunate accident where three young boys did die in a fire here uh, after playing with a lighter in a closet. Now over here, it looks like it was the laundry room. I'll make sure that uh, there's nothing here to jump out at me. They had big industrial washing machines. All right, guys, so I'm here at another location. Um, I was hoping that maybe I would get to uh, see the owner because from what I understand, if you pay him uh, to come and visit the location, he'll give you like the whole, all access. So I see a sign there that says private property. Uh, I don't see any telephone number, so I'm kind of hoping that somebody come but it's kind of early right now because I left to come here at uh, well I, I got up at four o'clock and I left at uh, 4 30 to get on the road and now it's 6 30 so it took me a little bit of time but uh, I'm hoping that somebody is going to see me I don't want to like disrespect anybody uh, it is somebody's property now, from what I understand, this place uh, was supposedly, the guy, the owner, was supposed to turn this into kind of a, a paintball or an airsoft location. And I don't quite have the name of this building, but it is an asylum. You're going to see the place right here. This is the place right here. Uh, it's a decent sized building. Now anybody who's an explorer here in Quebec uh, has most likely visit this place. Um, and from what I see there is a oh, there is an entrance there. But I'm gonna walk over here and see if I can actually come in contact with somebody. Alright, so I met the gentleman here. He's kind of like the sur the surveillance guy. And uh, we're just waiting for uh, the owner to get up, I guess, and uh, give me permission. I'm going to pay him the $10 to get in. So that way everything's cool. Everything's good. All right. So there was a little bit of a miscommunication. They thought that because uh, my French is not that good. So we're like, I'm standing there waiting and waiting. And I'm like asking the guy, I'm like, so when is your when is the owner gonna come? <laughs> and he's like replying to me, and I couldn't understand. So his uh, his girlfriend or his wife spoke a little bit of English, and then she's like, "When is your other friend coming?" I'm like, "No, it's just me." Oh, she says, "Well, you just pay us." I'm like, "Oh, okay." So <laughs> I gave him ten dollars, and uh, that's it. And they're like, "You go ahead." You can spend the whole day here if you want. Because these guys, the, um, the owner doesn't come during the day. So they come out early in the morning to check, see if there are people here. Because they say a lot of people come here and they don't pay. And let me say for $10, why not, you know? Uh, gives me full access to this place. And, uh, and that's it. So now I have the whole place to myself today, which is absolutely amazing. So. Where do we start? Well, let's start by going through the front door. Uh, I'm going to do a little exploration. And then uh, afterwards, I'm going to take all kinds of photos of the place uh, before I leave. So for $10, they said, I got this whole place to myself all day. I mean, say if other people come, that's fine. But like they said, 24 hours, it's yours. And I uh, said you can go around the property as much as you want. So this is the building right here, guys. Ah, I'm glad that uh, everything worked out and uh, everybody's happy. So let's go do some exploring on Urbex TV. This building, originally called Notre Dame de la Chenée, was built in 1939 for the missionaries of the Sacred Heart. 
The building was later sold in 1954 to the Frères de l'Instruction Christian to be translated the Brothers of Christian Instruction. They later turned it into an educational sanctuary to educate the young about Jesus and the church. In December 25, 1959, a fire broke out when three young boys were secretly smoking in a closet and accidentally started a fire which engulfed part of the building and killing all three. Once again the building was passed on, this time into the hands of the provincial government. The building was converted into a rehabilitation center for people with intellectual disabilities. About 90 patients were living there. It was said that the doctors were practicing electroshock therapy, lobotomies and other abuse for more than several years, which was practiced at that time. Unfortunately in January 1988, another fire broke out causing nine more people to be killed in this facility. Following the fire, the building once again was sold, but this time to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Waiting to convert the place into camps, they had abandoned the project, probably due to the lack of funding. In 2002, the building was finally abandoned. Wow, look at this. Somebody's been here. Burning candles. Wow. This place is creepy. Oh my God, man. This place is like so super creepy. Like even with the, the graffiti that I see here. Oh, a little bit of it. Just looking down this hallway right here, it's absolutely creepy. And also the fact that this place is supposedly haunted. No word, no joke, okay? No word of a lie. I wish I had the owner here, if he could speak French, uh, English, to kind of explain to me what happened here. Now, from my own, also my understanding as well, there has been paranormal teams that come here to do investigations as well to see if they were able to contact anybody from the spiritual world. So I don't even know if there's anybody in here right now. I hope not. If there is, I hope they don't scare the crap out of me. But just the fact that these candles are still burning means that it's fairly fresh. Seeing that I have the whole day to this, I'm going to take full advantage of it. I still got plenty of juice for the camera. I got my digital camera. I got my iPhone. So I'm going to take crap loads of pictures here while I'm here. So you, you guys out there on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like button. Show your love. Be a, bar, a part of the, the Urbex TV team. And uh, for those of you who are who are want to become a Patreon uh, on my page, um, the link will be in the description in the comments below the video. And uh, the page is up; it's still in in the works, um, but the majority of the stuff is there right now that it functions. And I'm telling you. If it's not the pigeons giving the, the creepy vibe in here, something is. Um, I'm starting to get that, I don't know, this is my first time and I'm getting that weird creepy chill up my spine. Um, normally, this is kind of a sign in some ways that you might be getting some paranormal uh, activity or remnants of something maybe trying to contact you. Maybe we might be able to get uh, a chance to get some paranormal activity, uh, do a little investigation, maybe do a little EVP or something. Or if you happen to see something in my video, please let me know because this is a hot spot for paranormal activity. Maybe we might be able to see something here get i got a little bit of a chill going on i don't know if this is normal 
Uh, I've never done, because uh, I'm new to urban exploration, I've never done a haunted place, and I've never been anywhere haunted to have an understanding of the effects of what a haunted place can do to somebody. So this is my first time. So I might be reading it incorrectly. I'm not sure. But uh, we haven't even started yet. Like we haven't even looked anywhere at this place. This place is massive. So uh, let's get started, shall we? One of the creepy things about going out on excursions like this by yourself is that you have no one to help you in case something goes wrong. And it's a little creepy when you're by yourself, especially in an insane asylum, or a, I don't know if it's an insane asylum or some kind of asylum where they, I guess it was probably used to just take, pay, maybe take care of orphans, because I associate a asylum with you know crazy people but I don't think that's the case I think um, there were just locations that were run by the church that you know probably helped orphans and I know that for a fact that there was a lot of orphans here so Okay, so this is it guys. We're going up to the second floor. Sounds like there's a lot of pigeons up there. I hope it's only pigeons. Oh, check out this. Wow, we got some nice work here. I remember seeing this on somebody's photo. So if you're an urban explorer as well, let me know in the comments below. Um, I, would like, I would be interested in finding out how many of you out there are urban explorers like myself. 
And uh, whether you do a YouTube video or you just do it for the fun of it, or maybe you're a photographer, I would love to find out. And also, if you're in my region of Quebec, or you know, on the outskirts, uh, say Ottawa, Ontario, um, Nova Scotia, and all those places, or pretty much anywhere across Canada, let me know. It may be a possibility I'll come and visit your local area if you have some cool abandoned locations there. There are lots of locations. The problem is, is getting to them quick enough before they go away. That's the problem. So, um, you know, what can you do? Uh, life goes forward. So does uh, locations like this and they get taken away. So people, I'll say this for you guys again. Don't forget to hit that like button, peeps. Come on, smash that like button. Show your love for the Urbex TV channel. I do my best to get out there and explore to show you, you know, places around my area. And hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to go out and explore other places across Canada and United States and the rest of the world. I'm not as fortunate as some of the big guys out there, the big names who uh, are out there exploring, you know, the entire world. But, uh, you know, you gotta follow your dream. You know, you gotta do what it is that you feel in your heart that you like to do and you wanna do and don't have anybody tell you otherwise. That's another thing I don't like is negativity. People telling you that, you know, what you're doing is stupid or a waste of time. But, uh, wow, this one was big. But you never let that stop you from doing what you want to do, okay? No matter what. As long as you're not hurting nobody or hurting yourself, that's all that matters. All right, so I pretty much covered everything inside the building. Um, I'm in the back right now. I'm gonna just do the perimeter to see uh, what else we probably missed. So I have to say that uh, I'm pretty satisfied about coming out here, only because of the, the history behind this place and what it was. Um, you know, and just in case, you know, gets torn down and it's non-existent at least I could say that I visited this place amongst a lot of other people who uh, who came here and uh, explored it it's another little shit there but I'm gonna say screw it for now you can stay there <laughs> ah damn it it seems the bugs are much bigger and thicker out here than normal. <sighs> okay, let's go and check out this little place. Ow. Whoa, that's a big wasp. Well, you know what, there's not much in there and I'm not gonna mess with that guy because he's bigger than my pinky. Bugs are super thick. I'm just double checking over here. I don't think there's anything else back here. No, it's just a uh, cornfield. Okay, I'm gonna take a sip of my Coke. 
before I lose it. Look, look, Jesus, man. Oh. This is the part of the day I love, you know. It may be dirty and stinky in that place over there, the, the asylum, but it's a lot better being outside and getting eaten the pieces. So, let me see where are these places. They were just like little cabins. Oh yeah, you could tell that uh, people were playing airsoft out here. I see the little BBs everywhere. Actually, this would be a cool place to come and play airsoft. All right. I guess when you see one, you see them all. Ah. There's a big, big fly coming after me. Ow. Sorry about that, guys. What a fucking day. That's it. I'm getting eaten alive here. Ow. Oh man, like seriously. I can't even fucking see my see where I'm going. There's so many mosquitoes and horse flies in my face. So don't forget to hit that like button guys. Subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Show me some love. Oh, share my videos with your friends. Get them to come over and check out my channel. I'll convert you over to being an explorer, like myself. <sighs> I put myself in these situations. <sighs> ah. And uh, if you want to become a patron <clears throat> and help support my content, you could pledge as little as a dollar per month. Right now I'll give you about averaging two videos per month until more locations come and more pledges are coming in to help pay for costs and expenses because there are tons of places to go but these places take take a while to get there and uh, you need money for transportation and fuel and costs so go on over to my patreon page and uh, support if you like you don't have to but like I say, a little goes a long way. And, ah! and uh, help uh, me buy some, uh, some bug repellent. So the next time when I come out here, or another place like this, I won't get eaten. I kind of wish it was uh, winter right now. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I love, I love you guys so much. Thank you for coming, checking out my videos. Ah, I'm just gonna take a break in here, see if there's gonna be less bugs. Woo! Oh, check out this. It's kind of a control, control station. Oh, well. Ah, thanks for watching my video, guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, like I said, go ahead and hit subscribe. There's more videos like this coming. And uh, for my patrons, you get the uncut, uncensored version. Well, I can't say uncut because uncut means it's not edited. But you'll get uncensored versions, extended versions, plus um, tons of rewards for making a pledge. And uh, until next time, don't forget to check out my uh, Twitter, my Facebook page, my... Um, uh, I'm so tired my uh, Instagram and also I have Flickr now so I upload lots of photos up there and uh, you'll get to see all the stuff that I'm doing okay love ya ciao bye